In this video, we're going to look at the two main elements that make up a photograph, color and tone, and look at how we can use them to make a better photograph inside of Photoshop. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe, and today we're going to break apart color and tone so by understanding that, we're going to be able to process much better images. And by the way, I want to thank uh, Professional Photographers of America for sponsoring this video. Um, you want to check out their membership. It's a great organization for professional photographers and aspiring professionals. And I'm going to talk about them a little bit more into this video. So here we are inside of the camera raw filter. And let's look here. If we look at these adjustments, we're going to be focusing in this area in the basic panel. Now, if you're working in Adobe Lightroom or Lightroom Classic, these are exactly the same. In fact, we're going to be focusing on this area here. The top two there focus on color. This is our color eyedropper. And these ones also focus on color. So let's forget about the color for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the luminance values. In fact, why don't we just go to black and white and that just takes away the color for now so we can really go in here and focus. So we're looking, it looks kind of dark, it looks kind of dull, right? So what's the difference between all these different sliders? We've got a whole bunch of them here. Well, this first group here affects our tones and these do not affect the color, they affect the tones. Okay, let's just work our way through these. So first of all, the exposure, let's turn that up a little bit so we can get it more pleasing. Usually that's what I'm, I'm kind of aiming for with the first one, just to get the photo look nice. And watch this histogram here. On the left is blacks, on the right are whites. That's great. We're looking pretty good. Now we want to recover more detail. When I talk about detail, we're saying detail in the highlights and the shadows. So if we recover the highlights, we can push that back a little bit. And that means that it's going to recover all the areas, bright areas in the photo. Same thing with the shadows. Let's open up those shadows, but don't go too far because see how it looks washed out and kind of milky. So just be careful with that. And we just want to kind of pop that open so we can see some of these areas. You know, you might see a little bit more detail in some of these areas here instead of them being pure black. All right, so why don't we just bring our color back in again so we can see how that's looking. All right, so that's how we look before and after. And notice how even the colors seem to be changing, but we haven't touched the color yet. We've just been working on the tones. Now the whites are just going to brighten up these areas. So the areas that look kind of milky, we could be able to make them more of a kind of a cleaner kind of a look. So you'll notice that the whites just really clean up the image. Now here's a little tip. If you hold down the Alt or the Option key, so that's Alt Windows, Option on Mac, and we go here, you can start to see the areas where it's clipping. That means we're losing detail in those highlights. So let's wind it back a little bit. And so we don't want to go any further than this. Now you don't have to go that far if you don't want to, but you don't want to go further than that. Now that's the white. See how it cleans up the image. Now the black is the one that gives you your contrast in the shadows and that gives the image body. So if you look at the blacks, if it's very low, see how it can kind of look washed out. So we're going to pull these blacks in. Once again, hold that Alt or Option key and you'll start to see those areas where it starts to clip. And you don't want to go beyond that clipping, stay in this other area here and we can add contrast. So now let's look at this before and after. Before, after, see how it's much cleaner now, much brighter, and that's just working with these sliders. Now notice I didn't use a contrast. And that's because contrast is the same as whites and blacks. It's like using white and black together. So essentially increasing the whites and decreasing the blacks does the same thing as a contrast, except it gives us more control over the other two elements. Now these are the presence sliders. So one of the ones that works quite nicely is texture. So if we're looking at the water here and we want to add more texture to it, we could increase that and see how it adds that surface texture. And of course, if you wanted to soften the texture, you could go the other way, make it more soft, kind of dreamy. This also works quite nice on skin. So we can take that texture back just a little bit. Well, that means we're losing sharpening, but we can go to detail here. And under detail, we can bring in sharpening and that's going to add that nice sharpening to the edges while keeping the surfaces a little bit smoother. And then we've got two more. We've got clarity and dehaze. Clarity gives us a little bit of punch in our midtone contrast. I never add too much of this because it can make the image just look a little artificial if you go too high. 
And dehaze is used, you know, if it's kind of foggy or there's haze that you want to cut through. It would get rid of glare, things like that. All right, so let's have a look at before and after. Big difference, but we haven't even touched the color yet. So let's jump into the color. But before we do, I just want to mention uh, the PPA, which is Professional Photographers of America. They've been around for about 150 years. In fact, just over, they were founded by photographers and they're still run by photographers today. So I want to encourage you to become a member. There's a link underneath where you can get $25 off membership. So what do you get for membership? Well, there's a number of things. One of them is you get $15,000 worth of camera gear insurance. You get free data recovery, and trust me, I've lost some data before, and that can get very expensive. They have over 1,100 hours worth of training and education there on the site. But not just that, but they're there to help you with different things. Um, you can get all kinds of forms. You can get advice for your business, uh, you know, model releases, property releases. All those things are available there. Also, discounts from places like BNH, Apple, Dell, etc. But it's so much more than that. If you really want to grow as a photographer or you really want to grow in your photography business, they're really good because they offer certification, degrees, there's competitions, including the Photographic World Cup. And also they have Imaging USA, which is one of the largest photographic trade shows in the world. And with your membership, you get your first year's entrance absolutely free to uh, Imaging USA. So anyway, guys, once again, check out that link underneath. Uh, I think you'll find it's going to be a really good asset to help you in your business. All right, so let's continue with the photograph here. What we want to do now is we want to look at the colors. So the first thing that we want to set is our color temperature. So as we can see here, this was as shot. And let's see what it looks like if we warm it up a little bit. Looks kind of interesting. Or if we cool it down, see how we can totally change the flavor of that photograph. Most of the time, I would say, you know, when there's things like greens and different things like that, it's nice to kind of warm it up. But here we've got blue hour. So I'm going to cool it down a little bit. And this is blue hour just before the sun rises. So in a minute, I'm going to show you something that works really well to get color and tone together. But before we do that, let's go up here. We're going to push up the vibrance a little bit. So what we're doing now is we're just intensifying the color there. And let's have a look at this before and after. And you can see this photo is just coming alive now. So what we're going to do now is we're going to scroll down to our color mixer panel here. And you'll see that in the tabs in the earlier version of Camera Raw. This is the 2020 version. All right, so what we've got here is hue, saturation, and luminance. So the first two deal with what we're talking about here is color. Hue is the color. Red, green, yellow, blue, whatever color it is. Saturation is the amount of the color. And then luminance is the same as luminosity. That's your lightness and your darkness. So this is where everything we've learned, we can pull it together. So watch what happens if I go into the blues. Let's go into luminance. And now I'm going to go in the blues and I'm going to darken them down a little bit. Watch what happens. See what that does to that photo. See how it intensifies that blue. And if you really want to make your blue, your blue skies pop, you can do the same thing. So I'm going to do that with the blue and I'm going to go into the purples a little bit. Darken those and maybe even hit those magentas. And look what's happening. We're not adjusting the color. All we're doing is darkening where that color is. And look at the huge difference it's making. So say, for example, in the reds here, let's lighten those up just a little bit. And see how we're just really bringing this photograph to life just by going in there. So we did our initial tone adjustments here in the basic panel and our initial color adjustments. Then we went down here into HSL and now we're adjusting the underlying tones in those colors, which just give those colors a lot of body and strength. Now, of course, you could shift the colors by going into hue if you wanted. So if we went to the blues and we wanted to change those to something else, you know, if you wanted to go full blue hour, you could do that very easy. See what we're doing? Just merging those colors in together. Maybe I'm just going to do that a little bit, but not so much. And then, of course, the saturation here is if you really want to increase the amount of those blues, you could do that or completely reduce or re completely remove them. So I'm not going to do much there in the hue and in the saturation there because you've got to be careful that you don't oversaturate your images. So let's look at this before and after. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, let me know in the comments underneath. Did you learn anything new or did this kind of approach where we were splitting it apart and breaking it down? Did it help some of this kind of come together and make it clearer for you to understand? So anyway, guys, if you're new here, welcome to Photoshop Cafe. Consider hitting that subscribe button. 
and also turn on those notifications and you'll get a new video from me every single week. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. So select that like button. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.